Coming up next, we have two of the greatest women to ever play the sport. It's Ashling Riley versus Katrina Casey on ESPN. We are back here at the Simple Green U.S. Open of Handball, Los Caballeros Sports Village, Fountain Valley, California, where Ashleen Riley and Katrina Casey will be going up against each other here. As we have Dave Fink up as the referee, John Bike, the Hall of Famer here in the booth, and the lead referee, you're going to be grading Dave Fink and his performance, and I'm going to be grading Dave, but two separate reasons. Dave is also going to be part of our broadcast crew, so hello, Dave Fink. How you doing guys? Great to be up here. There's a lot of energy in this crowd right now as the top two women in our sport prepare to do battle. Now Dave, do you recall the scores of the world championship as Katrina Casey went up against Ashley Riley there just a couple months back? Katrina Casey winning game number one, 21-11. Coming back in, Ashley Riley coming back in game number two, winning that 21-17. And then 11-7 in the tiebreaker for Ashling Riley, the two-time world champion. Well, they're, they're believe getting... me, Casey is One not minute. happy about that. Boy, what a conversation I had with her. It ended up with a conversation with her fists. Yeah, she's not, it's still a little bit sore. And let's look at a little bit of video of that world championship as Ashling Riley goes up against Katrina Casey. I know that we have some coverage that was given to Chris Garad, and here it is, the final part of that tiebreaker as Ashley Riley puts her hands up in the air there. That was in Calgary, and look at that presentation. And Ashley Riley puts her hands up in the air, and then, I mean, really, that was an emo a moment that was remarkable, John. I know you Katrina watched it back Casey home. Casey will serve first. Let's give a big hand. And look at this. To these two ladies. This is the finals of the 2015 Simple Green U.S. Open. The last time they touched, you saw in that video, it, it was sort of Ashley just slapping Katrina's hand. Here, though, a little Receding bit different in the women's serve, finals. The two-time defending world champion, Ashley Riley. This is the type of back and forth rivalry the men's game is begging for. And Serving Paul, Paul the women's race for number one and two time two defending Simple Green U.S. Open champion, right now, Katrina Casey. They both know it and they both want the exact same thing. You will have video replays if you choose to use them. You, you will have video replays if you choose to use them. Zero, zero. Now, not to start off on a negative, but the last time David Fink was refereeing, and I hope he doesn't interject here, he we will. used a great video replay, and we, we told him one thing, and he said, we told him the video confirmed that he was not right, and he <laughs> says, the video confirms I'm right. <laughs> So I hope that doesn't happen today. One zero. It probably won't. One serve zero. I dispute everything you're saying, John. <laughs> it's all true, though. We have we have to film. We have but, to. Two zero. But he can still dispute it. He can dispute it. Can the players hear him when he's commentating? Yeah, probably. This is innovative, and it's kind of a annoying, but innovative. There, there's going to be some kinks to work there's out an air for from sure. Katrina Casey. Zero <laughs> zero two. <laughs> I'm not sure I like everything about this. <laughs> Trina Casey. Well, that's like, why I what? said you are going to, as the lead rep, you're going to be judging this and two I, zero. I, I might just pull his plug. It's got to affect the job he's doing. Trina Casey saying, "What an error!" But oh boy, turn that mic down. Better modulate that one way low. We got a third person in the booth. Glad to be able to join. The two of you. I we bet now, you are. We Mr. now have Dave Vincent, John Bike. Lupita. Every woman's dream. Lupita Bike is now in here, Dave Fink. Excellent. Thank you, Zero Dave, two. for giving the opportunity. Welcome to the booth, Lupita. Now there's four, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an NFL pregame show. Now, Lupita, wanted to ask you a couple questions here. The women are absolutely remarkable right now. We saw with uh, Yvonne August who won a national championship One, in 2004, two. was on top of her game, took a little bit of time off, came back, playing pretty good, and then she scored zero against Katrina Casey in New York, and she said, I've never seen this at all in my life. Katrina Casey lost at the Worlds, and I know you're in awe as well. 
I, definitely in all, Dave. Uh, a lot that's going on that's a little different is the uh, definitely uh, the strength. Uh, Ashling has definitely a lot of strength on in both arms, and when she hits that ball, it's just Broken how ball. do you react? Broken ball already, and we are low on that. That crow's nest is full of WPH balls. Well, that's not a WPH know, ball. They I don't play know with where the, the next 21 is coming from, to be honest. And Ketriana Casey, when she touches the ball, it just manages to go to the exact spot that she places it at, and it makes it a really tough game to compete against because she's just so genuinely talented. Unfortunately, now, guys, I was not given access to more than one ball. I asked repeatedly. Was not granted that they, request. They're a little stingier with the 21 ball than they are with the WPH well, ball. This is the women's final, so. I, I agree they should have a ball to play the final. I do not want to be judged on this because I asked <laughs> on numerous <laughs> occasions for multiple balls. You that make, request was denied. If and I ignored. were, instead of getting defensive about it, I would make a PA announcement to the tournament <laughs> director to, to get a handball. I, if I had a microphone in front well, of let me. Let me ask you this, Lapita. Back in the days that you were touring, on the professional women's tour, could is. you name a player that you recall that was similar Replaying. to Katrina Casey in that methodical style? Katrina Casey, I think I, I honestly compare her to uh, Anna Engel. She just, uh, I mean, this, this is what she did. It was 24-7, and she committed her entire time and opportunities to being the best and getting better at uh, what she did. and. Complete dedication, so I, I see the two resemble in, in that aspect. What about the aspect of being able to, like you said earlier, place the ball? ball exactly where you want to put it? Okay. Anybody? Yeah. Replaying? Uh, let me, I'll have to think about that, Dave. And, and One. It might, she might just modest. be unique she in that sense. She was actually her. She just <laughs> didn't have the dedication. She had the, so if you had Anna's dedication and Lupita's ball placement, she'd be Katrina. Katrina Casey. Well, it, Anna you, and Lupita, sounds like Katrina. And a Pita, Katrina, Two, I see it. One. I hope there's like an Irish radio simulcast of this so they don't have to listen to the, the four chummy friends Three, here one. amusing ourselves. Chummy? What are you talking about? Score is three to one. Thank you. was Killian Carroll defeating Mondo Ortiz 21-5 in the first game of that fifth place playoff. Thank you. So Katrina glanced up briefly at the ref. Did you just call Ender? But she kept her focus to win the point. 4-1. I'm going to thank our reporter and referee, Dave Pink. And there's a little swing and miss. That's the other big difference in the game is uh, you just can't miss. If you have an opportunity from the back wall, One, four. whether it's your left or right, you, you definitely have to make that shot. And so whoever uh, makes the least misses, it's, it's going to be in favor of them. That's automatic. Ashley Riley, two oh, to four. Two, four. Pulling for a quick Killian Carroll victory as he is scheduled to referee the final match of the evening on this court, Nadia Alvarado and Chris Watkins. So he's Got special purpose trying to run through Ortiz. It's kind of not fair for Armando. I am expecting some help on short calls and hinders. So our referee making a, a Three, call out four. to the booth here. You know, Katrina Casey has actually entered into the qualifier, Lapita, at the Tucson Pro Stop in a couple weeks. And she's going to try to see if she can qualify in the men's pro tour. I think she could do really well, honestly. Uh, again, back to her, uh, she's just talented in both hands. I, uh, I saw her play a couple years back, Wrist. and I was really Point. in awe about uh, her style of play. And that, I mean, she has the movement four, four. as if she's getting ready to kill with her left hand as if it's her right. And it, that's really different to see in, 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 her, in a woman's game at the very beginning of their, their game. So it was... I could see it definitely progressing over time. I think it's really the transfer of being able to play with a hard ball. But I think this 21 kind well, of bridges the gap. It's power. the power as well. It just power, consistency. She's consistent enough. There's another miss hit there. She has tried before. How have those gone? 
Four, well, she, four. she lost twice, I believe. Actually, maybe just once. San Francisco. 4-4. Four, four. Okay. She lost 25-23 to 23 in a qualifier Replay. semifinal in San Francisco. 4-4. Four, four. Was that also a qualifier <laughs> opening round? Was it an opening round as well as the Did semifinal? Replay. Yeah. How many rounds has, he, has four, she won four. in the men's qualifier? Well, she only, I think, only played one, and she lost one round. But it was 25-23. She would have been in the final. Definitely was not Side out. Now the women and uh, the men, they play with two <laughs> different sets of balls? Yes. 4-4. Four, four. Women Which have the Much as in real life. 21 ball for the women and the race for eight ball for the men. And so if she's playing, if Katriana Casey's playing with the male version of the ball, I think uh, that's going to be in her benefit because the ball definitely lands in places differently. 4-4. Four, four. Depending on... Uh, the contact you make with it. So it, it'd be in her favor at the qualifier. Okay, well, we'll see what happens on November 6th. I'll have to tune in. Excited to see that. Now, she, I wouldn't say she's a maverick, but would you think back in the day that you were playing on the Pro Tour, Anna Engel and, and four, four. Priscilla yes, Shoemate, they would try to qualify and enter qualifiers, or Lisa? And Anna and Lisa did, yes. Right. Yes, I think so. I think it's just... Another opportunity for women to get out there and I thought you had time to recover. Be exposed to that higher level of play. Now watch this. Okay. Watch what happens here. Dave says that we can replay this one, but you can't stop the play. I thought you had enough time to recover to play that shot. He didn't Ashley and Riley didn't like the way that Katrina drifted in front of her there and she just picked up the ball. Four, Dave four. was just basically say we're gonna replay it, but I don't like, you know. Go ahead and play the ball, and I'll call it. Yeah, it's not Ashling's call sure. at all. She, Ashling couldn't expect Katrina to go all the way to the left wall on that one. She, she took the most logical I did bounce. think it was a bad bounce for serve. I, I did get an opportunity to ref uh, four, four. last night's match against her and Golly, and uh, I did notice that she Point. pauses and tries to, you know. Get a call. Get a call, and, well, after a few tries at that, I Five, thought, four. no, let, let the ref make the call, and. Hopefully we see it, and uh, it's it's in either her favor or, you know, the ref makes the final say. So uh, I told her to play on, and that's I think key here. She needs to just play on. You can't you, wait uh, on the slides and. Are you the first person six, and second four. person in that? Were you the ref? I was the ref. Okay. I was the main also ref. Against them, I caught that too. So I had to figure it out a couple plays later, and finally a second game, and I said, nope, let me make the call, and if I see it, I see it. Hopefully I get it right. That was a nice shot right there. Definitely. From Ashley and Riley. 4-6. You know, I agree with John that this is really the best rivalry in, in handball right now. Where on any given day in the final, you don't know which one's going to win. We saw that Ashley and Riley won the world championship after it was all Katrina throughout the whole year winning at the Players' Championship, and then Ashling pulling it out there in the tiebreaker. And hats off to them. They have that personal intense rivalry of two people going for the same thing, but no no tabloid trash talk to this point so far. Six, four. As no, but they're see, not best of friends either. Well, that's, they don't have to be best Screen. of friends. They're, they're just taking, they're both taking the high road on. First serve. Definitely Six, makes four. them a little unique. For sure, uh, they both just are very classy, calm ladies, uh, and they're just, you know, so are you, out for the same intent, come out on top. Seven you know, four. Dave and I had this conversation before about women handball players, and and if. Maybe if this makes you think about it a little bit more, Lapita. Eight four. Out of all the top women that play the game, and when you get to know each one of them, they all have a kind of a quirky, funny, very funny sort of outgoing personality. Do you think that that's sort of the breed that we have to have in order to play in sort of a man's world game, where you're playing mainly down at your club against men, and they have to build up this sort of armor? And if you say, you know, Lisa Fraser Gilmore has a great, you know kind of funny sense of humor. Time out. Ashley, you talked to Katrina. I don't know if you know her very well, but she is eight. really funny. Very dry sense of humor. But 
Ashley Riley might be one of the funniest. And it's, it's strange that you just go down the list and say, this is a very, very outgoing, funny person. And you can't say that about all the men pro players, but you can say it about the women. You can go down each in, in every single one throughout the years. They all have these really great, funny personalities. Dave, no, I think uh, in their her. case, they know, uh, being around all of you, of course, who entertain them all the time, uh, they just know that the least I say and funnier I might be. Yeah, it's strange that way. Let's go down to Kara, who's courtside right now. Kara? Courtside with another female player who must have this quirky personality. <laughs> Gene, they're saying that most of the female players have this quirky personality. What's yours? I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Waiting me on the spot. You can't here. do that. I know you can't do that. We See, that's quirky. Say, that's quirky. Yeah. That's what they're saying. That's what makes you quirky. Yes. I have it's just fitting. maybe a dry sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> you play Katrina in the quarterfinals. Seeing her out here now, you've seen these two players quite a bit. What do you find is both of their strengths? Well, on Katrina's side, um, definitely finesse and power. Kind of a combination of that. Um, Ashley, definitely power and. Um, fitness and um, so knowing that Ashleen took the worlds from Katrina do you think there's any fire underneath her or do you think it's just the opposite Ashley's now coming to the open wanting to steal that title away from Katrina well um, it, this game is gonna be very close and I'm excited to see who's gonna win but um, yeah I'm, I'm sure Katrina is out to get Ashley on this one and then Ashley just wants to keep her world title so it's like hard to really you know pick a favorite here but just cheer for the um, best player to win really Thank you. <laughs> the cute little quirky personality. It's great. Oh, I can all like. Well, not sure. you. You don't play. Appealing a bad bounce. Yes, she does actually. She actually has played. Neither soft before. Second serve. Kara. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of a requirement. You have to throw <laughs> them in the court. Look at that shot. Well, Jean did celebrate a birthday yesterday, so maybe that'll take one Four, year eight. off the quirkiness that we're, we're talking about. <laughs> Is that about how it here. works? That's how it works. The older you get, it's like, eh. The more okay. candles you blow out on your cake, the less quirky <laughs> the you less are. The less quirky you how are. How they go from the classy personality I said to quirky? What happened? Are we playing like some word game? Wow. Turns classy into quirky. Classy and quirky. They're not quite synonyms. I got it. Five, eight. I know you don't know this, Lapita. Yes. But Dave Fink is also part of this broadcast crew here, and he can chime in at any moment. Hi, Dave. Welcome back. It's pretty mesmerizing when you're actually uh, in the seats and all the action. It's Eight, been five. completely full the entire uh, yeah, it's packed. four day weekend, so uh, yeah, I, I, I expect rioting tomorrow because it's it's a rover capacity already today. US versus Ireland. Another air from Ashling Riley. And Nine five. This is not what you would expect <laughs> from neither the player who just won the world title or the referee into a microphone. Boy, Ashling's 10 feet away from her, but. Well, he can't, she can't hear it. It's a different microphone. I think the, fan, I think the fan's helping us in this case. Ashling seeking her first women's race for eight title. <laughs> Katrina going after her eighth. Ashling Riley with a terrible error there on the 19th shot of the rally. He's reffing and he's doing shot track. Scores 10-5 here, guys. Ashley Riley asking for the towel. How much ground did uh, Katrina cover on that point during her eight shots? About four feet. We have to get the Fitbit app on Katrina Casey here. I saw that in the stands a little while ago. I thought, wow, I wonder how many steps she gets. 10-5. Especially in Hamble. Somebody told me once, and I just wish I would have remembered. That's a nice pass shot. The discipline of these players is just remarkable. Well, it's like now they've played each other so many 11 times. 11 5. They, really read, they don't have to read each other's shot. It's just instinct. Yeah. 
And the referee announcer's curse right there, and a very undisciplined miss. Five, five, eleven. Katrina has such a good left hand. She coils that hand like a like a snake, ready to attack. Wrist, side out. A classy call, not quirky. Second classy ball wrist match. ball Back call. to the classy, definitely. 11-5. Classy with power. Love it. Reminds me of you, John. <laughs> well played. Now we got four comedians. All right. Classy looks fatigued here. That is no good reason for that 12, to be five. either, but I think you're right, David. You want to interview her right now? Well, there's an, another skip in, and Ashley knows that on her toes. she's 13, not, five. She's she's not doing things quick. right here. Yeah, the only thing, maybe it's in her head, the only thing I could figure is the stat mentioned by our referee announcer. She has not won a race rate event yet. She's won just about everything else. But this is not the Ashley Riley we, we expect. Or the other thing we could dig into is uh, I, I can't tell you how much anger 14, Katrina five. expressed when I made a reference to the world result. Yeah, I think in it's my typical joking, <laughs> lovable manner that everybody enjoys being around. She didn't for some reason she didn't take it that way. Well, now she just scored another point here. No, I think 15, she has a statement five. match going on right now. Statement match because this is the first broadcast after the world for her, and there are a lot watching. Trust me. Well, they might have been in the start, then they, they heard us. Sweet, smooth. Katrina Casey oh. anticipated that corner kill perfectly, just died in front of her. 5.15. Short. You know, it seems that Ashley Second Riley serve. really gets up for the, the major championships, the All-Irelands, the, the World Championships. And when it comes to some of these vacation tournaments, mm -hmm. even though this has, you know, it's no knock to your father, Nadia Alvarado Sr., but I think it's building itself toward one of those that's now prestigious. Like Paul Brady said in his post-game interview, he said, this is now bigger than the Nationals. And, you know, this is now 15, something that five. people want to win. And I think I, the, the players are kind of feeling the sense of importance to get their name on the list. I know Ashley is such a great player, but she has never won a professional pro stop on the tour. 16 She's five. won everything else, though. It's hard to go to L.A. and focus on handball, I'll tell you that. And there's going to be a timeout soon. Timeout, Ashley, your second one minute. The well, score is 17-5. Katrina's accomplishing at this point. Well, I know that you and I couldn't leave Ashley and Riley at 5 right now, be up 17-5. to five. So this is quite an accomplishment. I could if she felt that she was in a vacation tournament. If she felt she was in an event bigger than nationals like Paul Brady, I couldn't. So some yeah, that's probably Crazy. true. And Lapita, just a year or so ago, you played in this open division. And what did it feel like coming back and playing professional handball after you've taken so much time back? You know, uh, I felt a little slow. <laughs> There's things that your mind uh, definitely wants to do and knows that it, at some point in your life, were able to react to. Uh, but uh, 15 seconds. the power, the strength, the placement of the ball, getting to the ball. You know, you thought, OK, I just need one or two leaps to get to where I need to be. And that just doesn't happen as you get older. So uh, as soon as I discovered that, I thought, OK, time. all right, I got a zero and a one. Actually, you'll have one time out remaining. Score was at the end, but it was definitely a defeat. And you don't like walking away from a Hamill match in, in that manner. So I think until it, they handed you a check 17, at the end of the tournament, you're saying, oh, OK, it wasn't that bad. You know, yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know what, though, Dave, uh, being competitive and something that just happens in our family, the check in the end. Yeah, dandy. Love it. Uh, but losing it stings a little and you remember it so uh wish they had these kind of checks when i was a little younger what <laughs> who did you play that eliminated you mahilos okay so i mean she won the tournament that year I she think. did yeah. she actually so did 5 win. 17. Well, i mean what are you gonna do nothing you lost nothing. to the best player in the united states exactly exactly but, uh, 
I see my sister competing, and she's enjoying it, but at the same time, when she's in the court, broken ball. it's not going her way. broken ball for the ladies. I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't think we've provided for this. Never seen a 21 ball break. That's rare. For Definitely a women's rare. match twice before one game has ended. Back to the strength. Just five, seven, the game they in. certainly do have it, and I've played uh, both five, of these 17. women before, and I was amazed. I really was. Which ball did you play with? 21 ball, the same ball. It, was, it didn't matter. It would have been any ball. It would have been fast. Very amazed by the power of both. was probably short guys <laughs> the yeah, referee we, we were totally on something else don't don't count on us for it. yeah but we have an instant replay 17 5 there was no appeal though Mondo Ortiz comes back and wins the second game 21 14 against that? Killian Carroll. Now, I personally didn't see that happening only because, not because of the relative abilities, just because Armando is in the doubles final tomorrow for serious cash. That shows a lot of character on his part to, to rally. But race for eight points are sometimes hard That's to come what by. He mentioned. I had a little pregame talk. He was holding court in the lobby and he was doing all the math and the it's hard to put a cash value on ranking points, just immeasurable. Well, when the person that wins the race, as we watch that play develop, Lapita, the, the player that wins the race for eight in ranking points gets $15,000 in cash without even having to play. 518. In, in the sense that you're playing for the tournament cash, which is the same as always, 5,000 for first, 2,500 second, whatever it is. But there's 15,000 for whoever ends up as the number one ranked player at the end of the year, and then Ooh. 9, 10, 11,000 for that. number two. Appealing a double bounce. You're appealing like double that. bounce. I'm, I'm, I'm questioning it. I didn't see a double bounce. Incentive. We'll take Back a look at replay, match. too, if we have Either it. Either saw a double bounce, the call stands. They just can't believe a woman would do that, but that, that was shaky to me. I don't know if we'll ever be able to see it. 18-5. But between these two, there have been more double bounce appeals. I would call them accusations. Dave, that's, that's pretty similar to the uh, the tennis, the professional tennis. You play for so many points throughout the year. Yeah. So we're off the double bounds entirely. 19-5. It was a non-issue. But yeah, I guess it would be like the FedEx Cup, the Sprint Cup, you know, all that sort of go for the points and whoever has the most gets the, the cash. Oh, nice shot there. It was a good shot, but Ashley Riley only has five. 519. And Katrina Casey with 19. Here. Short. Now there was a discussion in the Second earlier serve. match. Was it uh, who came back from 19 2 to 21 9? And David Fink would know this. And he said to me, it's 21 2, not 21 9. But to me, the key is if you make a little run late in the game, you might be setting yourself up to win the second game. It was like a Killian Carroll early on right. this and morning. And that's sort of like It seems like a day is. ago. It seems like 619. How these things go. We've been here so long. But I, I would be all for trying to establish momentum. And Killian did win that second game. Right. Didn't go on to win the match. but So maybe turn it up to your A game here and try to wow, establish again. momentum. Casey, Casey's having none of it. 19-6. Smart shot. And it was a smart shot. Katrina Casey pushing that ball down the left wall. Now this is hard. David Fink as a referee and announced as a referee, 26. it's his own rule that he can never say anything complimentary to the players. Game, an announcer, five minutes. He has to acknowledge that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a split decision up there as Katrina Casey takes game number one of the women's finals here at the Simple Green U.S. Open of handball on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Kat Casey losing in the finals in the tiebreaker against Ashley Riley and just before that dominated the whole year of 2000.
14 15 up until that moment. And well, then, Dave, remember, Katrina did lose in the All Ireland final in late March to Ashling Riley. Uh huh. Ashling becoming the captain of the Irish team as a result of that victory and then cementing that Irish captaincy with that second consecutive world championship. I'd like to comment on uh, the game itself. Uh, I noticed that you know the, the individual who keeps the ball away from the corners of the wall, the back wall, and down and low just has the advantage. And uh, it could be with a serve, it could be with a return, it could be with a kill shot. But uh, the less wall usage that you use, analytically, the, the better off the, the player is going to end up. So drying, driving the ball down the walls so they're sliding, kind of passing the ball deep are, are the winners? What I just saw at, at the moment, yes, and then of course not uh, That's true. Most of missing. those plays were ended by balls that were left in the deep court on on driving pass shots, especially toward the end of that match. It seemed like that it was probably 100% of every single point came from a driving pass shot. Definitely, and, and that's from from years back I mean that's just something that's really tough to do and and if you have that ability and skill it you're gonna be a tremendous player in the sport you're listening to perennial top 10 women's pro tour champion actually former national champion in doubles and uh, you know you've played for many years until a, a back injury due to a, probably a car wreck I'm assuming because everybody gets in one eventually Lupita Alvarado bike and your father puts on this tournament Lupita and you know has been synonymous with Simple Green and the success that both organizations have had for many many years but what what do you say about how the Simple Two Green minutes. US Open has evolved itself into this sort of festival for handball and how it kind of weaves in your family I we, right there we saw your kids are standing on the court right now and then your relatives over here <laughs> nephews and nieces um, but they're on their you know, blowing down the court, wiping off the walls, and that's your whole family here. How's that, that, is, that feel? That is, and you know, uh, unfortunately, the kids had school until yesterday, late yesterday, and so uh, we've been here since Wednesday. But Dave, it's just always finding that opportunity to make whatever you're working on better each time, and it's 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 not just all right what worked, it's what didn't work. What could we do better? You know, we go with the pluses, the minuses, and now we call them opportunities and, and challenges, and so. We look at that. I mean, we actually, after each event, especially the Simple Green, uh, we sit down and we, we meet as a family on a Sunday afternoon and we actually have a meeting. One All right, minute. what happened that worked and what happened that didn't work? And and we, we take those uh, uh, suggestions and, and we go from there and we produce it to uh, Bruce and his, his supporters and the changes happen and for example this year we came one day earlier i mean typically we've shown up on a thursday morning and had the tournament begin on thursday morning and we thought no let's let's try for wednesday let's get everything ready so that when everyone gets here we have their undivided attention or they have our undivided attention and we can just hand them what seconds. they need and get them registered and ready to play oh that's nice and, and but that's not the only change i mean it's obvious when you come here there's a there's sort of now you, you have booths here uh, you, you have pop-up tents, you, you have vendors selling things. I, I know a little bit of that was provided last year, but it seems a little bit more like a carnival atmosphere in a way. And then there's a lot of signage around the Los Caballeros Sports Village. And there's little tiny things that I don't think a lot of people realize, but they're there, you know, uh, put into place. Like you just saw there when Ashley and Riley was sitting on the steps, you saw the simple green name on the steps. And it looks now we're like we're in an arena sport and they've really kind of dressed that up. But but really it's the love for the game and, and from – Bruce Fabrizio and Simple Green, they've done so many good things. Dave, you just, you just you just magically said the uh, the word there. It's definitely it's a love. Tasty. If you have a passion and a love for something in life, it's just going to definitely end up uh, being at its best. And, and this is definitely it. I mean, someone has a heart, and then, of course, that heart is shared with others. And it's back to the trusting and, and, and honesty. And, and this is what you get. You know, you're, you're, this year we had four meals advertised and we had that much of a support to add an additional meal. That's five meals in four days. So it's, it's really neat to see the, well, that's nice. the support from all of the... Uh, uh, here's another one that, uh, you know, that we can bring up. The women's finals were always the first one out of the gate. Eight o'clock on Sunday morning. Here they are in prime time on a Saturday night, which is a change. Ashley, you'll Definitely. Start right, so two. that's for the sport of women's handball. We're putting this in a prime time spot, which I think zero, is really zero. cool. 
and it's away from that get up early in the morning, only two people in the stands because, well, they don't even let people in the door sometimes at the club early enough. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great change. Another opportunity for, for everyone to see the game grow. And that was a great move, too, by the way. Thank you all. Let uh, everyone know. I'm sure you had something to do with that, too. I didn't. No, no, no I didn't. I absolutely loved it, though. I was like, well, finally. Awesome. Now, tomorrow when the men start at 8 o'clock in the morning, we'll, you know, sure. we can complain about that later. Appealing but right serve, now, I this is as it sure. is. It's, it's great. Second I love it. Serve. Now, there's little things around here. We feel it. Ashley I love the way Ashley looks, too, all dressed up in simple I'm green. I'm digging the green it just and looks the color great. itself. Good luck getting a word in, Mr. Fink. He's trying. Now we're back in here at game number two. Slide. Replay. That's not easy to see when you're sitting right on this left wall. Excellent job. And one zero. We're going to say goodbye to Lupita Alvarado bike here. Thank you for your commentary and also the talk sure. about Simple Green. But really, thank you for what you're doing with the tournament and your family Second and controlling serve. those kids. I saw your son try to take the leaf blower and throw it into your daughter's hair. <laughs> I don't know if you have to if you have to ground from the microphone on or how that works, but you know, Dave, I, I just want to give <laughs> thank you again. Uh, back to what you had asked a little bit earlier, what's different, what's changed, and honestly, uh, also Zero promoting one. the sport in the way you do definitely helps us all kind of want to sure. achieve and be on this spotlight. Oh, cool. Thank you. So thank you for doing yeah, that for you're us. You're welcome, but it's not all me, but thanks. Second, sir. Well, anyone who supports you, and thank you again. All right, thank you. thank you. Thanks for stopping by the booth. We had Lopita Alvarado Bike, former top professional women's pro player here, but also part of the tournament director's family. And your wife, John. Everybody's related to you here, so I mean. <laughs> one zero. Hope you start in a rumor like that. We're at one to zero here in game number two. Guys, you can never count out Ashing Riley. That's We've exactly. seen him lose game one so far and come back to win the match. Two zero. We're talking about the handball, are we? Okay. So yeah, that's short. Why well, this is the best rivalry in handball, and he. Lopsided result is once it happens, it's over, and then down there's a brand new game. Second serve. Now, I'll talk more about handball and less about all that other stuff, John, but I wanted to one more time comment on I love the way Ashley and Riley looks in that simple green outfit. Is that one of the things that they're, they, they're telling the players they have to wear? No, this it's year? absolutely, they were on their own and came back. I Catch love it. Catriona texted the committee earlier to, to, to clear what she was wearing. I, Ashling is actually wearing the standard issue tournament shirt this year. That's old school. I just love it. I think it's an absolute beautiful shirt. And Katrina Casey now sponsored by the New York Athletic Club. So I believe that's the replay, the NYAC logo she has on. I believe you're right. Zero two. There it is. You won't see Katrina miss that shot very often. 2-0. There's that deep crack serve, impossible to defend. slide on the serve. <laughs> well, the, now I'm very happy to have Zero three. referee as announcer because he is definitely filling in the noticeable gaps. Casey on the board with a beautiful serve of her own. One three. playing with a lot more purpose now, using the walls. That was nearly a skip ceiling shot and an error by Katrina Casey. 3-1. Yeah, as in many great rivalries, they've played each other so often, you just sit waiting for the time where they're both excelling. A lot of it's just slogging through. 
stuff caused by familiarity. Ooh, the crack saves her there. Riley about to tee off on that one with the whole right side open. One three. Perfect first strike. That's how they draw it up. Is that on your instructional video? That that particular exchange? Two, or is three. it just all about stretching and mental preparation, I'm sure. John, do you notice that Katrina's taking a lot of balls, three, three, before, before they get to the back wall? Yeah, even on the up bounce if necessary, not the traditional four wall play. Well, I, she said she's uncomfortable with that back wall. I agree with you, Dave. I'm especially uncomfortable with it in the evening. This time of the day, it's darker than it is when there's sunlight. There's a skylight behind the court that's it's buffered and it's, it's not bright light, but it's Three, three. It makes for a brighter back wall during the day. Nice shot there from Ashley Riley. Riley looked comfortable with that one. Katrina is appealing a bad balance on the light. Both agree, point. Four Average slogging it out rally ended with a better than average Six, three. winner there. Left hand corner kill from sure. a hard position. It's like Ashley and Riley kind of fought that off just a little bit. Just tired of the mediocrity. Second serve. So I'm going to try something special. in both world championships at Ashland won. She played terribly in the first game and came back and won the next two. I had not remembered that, but, but thank you for that insight. That's well, well, it's very frustrating. Well the case again. Frustrating that you don't Seven, remember that. Three. No, I'm saying that's, that's valuable information and that she might, history might be repeating itself. Our referee knows this as well. Both of these women in the past have made adjustments after losing to kind of counter what they were able to see, and that's what Ashley did at the Worlds. And we saw Katrina do it at at Salt Lake City's Players' Championship. Amazing look at that. Shot. Yeah, this is a totally Ashley different full flight. Eight, three. Totally different. Short. Players. Second serve. Did David just call you short? He should. I'm confused now on what he's. Good timeout there. Timeout, Katrina, you're first. One minute. The score is 9 3. Ashley Riley didn't hear that at first there, but now she knows it is a timeout. You're watching the Simple Green U.S. Open of handball with Dave Vinson alongside. John Bike, Dave Fink is up in the crow's nest, and we have Kara Mack down courtside. Let's go to Kara. Courtside and Annette on Ashley's side here. I'm with her best friend, her junior partner. He's also a fellow handball player who was playing earlier, Sean Clark. Talk a little bit about her as a player and an athlete. I just think uh, our all round game just pushes people to the side. Um, our style of play does. I think Katrina's game is more sort of. Pushing back, pushing back, where actually more aggressive and attractive. I told her the day she needs to take her time and pretend just rallying with me in a court, practice games, and then just go for her shots and not force anything. Being her partner, what do you like best about playing with her when you did? 
the way she makes, she makes me run about the court, she constantly pushing me around the walls, around the walls, and then she does that in the game here, she'll be flying, but that's what I told her on the time out there. Just the way she just pushes me back, yeah. You've known her since she was 12, 13 years old, is that right? 13 years old, playing. She played uh, on the Gaelic football team, the men's Gaelic football team against me. And one of my friends was marking her. She played with all the boys, so she did as well. When she was younger, she was that good. So an all-rounder back at home, Gaelic, hurling and handball. How was it that you guys became friends? Uh, just the Irish development team. Um, from about under 14, we would have been in and out of the Antrim Championships. And then the Irish development squad would have been a, a development team for the younger Second handball serve. players coming through and she would have been top of the ladies. If you could describe her in three words, what would they be? Oh, during handball, uh, scary, aggressive and uh, funny. She has a funny side to her too. Yeah, she does. What about on the personal side? Oh, really, really funny. We both have some similar interests <laughs> that we do with our, our movies and we have nicknames for each other and stuff. So um, yeah, she has, she has a delight. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> She's actually very fun. Ten three, one of the best to be around. She looks like she's all serious in there when she plays, John, and she yeah. has this like very serious attitude. No, she's playfully funny and one of the s smartest people I know. It's great to be around her. That's the great part of this game, the socialization afterwards. If you only know her from her court demeanor, funny is not a word that comes to mind, but those of us fortunate enough to engage in conversation afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just remarkable. I thought that you still had time to recover and take the shot. I thought you wanted to shoot that in the left. Eleven three. Why do the pro players want to call that over when they make a little con contact? When the ball's not, you know, the ball's still dropping. You still have an open shot. Why would you it's want to totally stop the play? It's totally based on you were trying to erase their own error by saying, it's, "Oh, it's actually the referee's error." I've been seeing that all day today, and actually people in the crowd were buying it in the early match. The player would make a poor shot, try to blame the referee. It kind of bugs me because the, the play hasn't stopped it. yet. I mean, right. you have plenty you of time. To, yeah. You're pros for a reason. I expect that from 60 and 70 year old doubles players, but I don't expect that. Well, if it, we should do whatever works. So if, if the, then David Fink was having none of it, so now they know not to do it again. That's two but bounces, uh, yeah, no? I thought it was. There. Not sure if you noticed. Yeah, that, that was that was your fault because of the previous correct call you made. That's Eleven seen three. a lot of that today. I thought you had the opening there. I gave it to her. No, I we, we are <laughs> you are grading out well as a referee. I can't speak for an announcer. If, if I had to say, I'd say you're doing well as an announcer as well. That's good timing. Nice shot there. That shows you how good Katrina Casey's left hand is. Recoils, does a little snake bite. Left-handed kill shot, left side wall. And with the top players, the jump Four start 11. when you need it could come from the offhand or the strong hand. You just, let's see if, if that is the jump start. Force that. 5-11. Yeah, no reason to force that either. I mean, she's still pretty much in control. As we talk a lot about how great the offense is of both these ladies, if you see an error. Timeout, Ashling, you're first, one minute. But let's not forget, Dave, both these ladies are capable of hitting some incredible ceiling shot returns, and we've seen that throughout this match, particularly from Ashling Riley in the backcourt. That's true. But after that call that Katrina wanted to try to buy from you, she has actually used it as motivation and now she's trailing by six instead of nine or 10 points. So she has a nice little run here, she's using it to her favor, certainly. Ashing Hudden with her team here, courtside. Katrina disappears from the court, likes to be off on her own. 
but Ashing receives a lot of coaching and also advice during these timeouts. 15 seconds. Ashling, you'll have one timeout remaining. Katrina Casey to serve. Katrina Casey returning to serve here. Ashley Riley, our current world champion. 11-5. Nice shot there. What How does Ashley get that back? Defense. Yeah, That's get it back. Impossible. I mean, that was unbelievable. Another great shot. No way that gets back, and it doesn't. And That's five, the type 11. of point you want to see more from these two. Both of them executing solid shots. Good return. Nice shot there from Riley. Not sure what she's looking up for. Well, Katrina crossed in front of her. And Ashley's just going to let this play through and say, are you going to let her do this every single time as cross in front of me like that? I didn't, I didn't think it was a problem on I, that it, shot. You know, it really isn't a problem, but for some reason, it. the players these days want to call those. 6-11. Like nothing just struck me in my handball instincts. Like, whoa, that's bad. I, I didn't. I like when they cross First over so you can hit screen. the ball right back down the wall where they just left. It's only a, an avoidable if they do it like at a last second of the surprise. If it's just part of the flow of the rally, they're allowed to do it. And Dave, I think Ashling's realized that hitting the ball hard to the ceiling is a good play because Katrina is just not comfortable off this back wall. Well, apparently, Ashley isn't either, because she just almost swung and missed on that one. Now trailing by four points. And both players are kind of chirping at the referee this, here. This is an adjustment. As you say, all their matches here have been 8 or 9 in the morning, bright morning sunlight coming through that skylight. 11, 7. Their first experience with the evening court one. Twelve seven. The third broken ball. I don't know if this is broke, is it? I don't know what this play is. Referee really looking this ball over here. I don't see where it's broken. That's another, Deja vu. that's another play that Ashley has stopped that has been against her for stopping the play in the middle of the 7 -12. play. 7-12. I just, you just play through the whistle as far as, as far as I remember being taught. No whistles in handball, of course, but Know what I'm saying? If it breaks now, you can't blame me. <laughs> no, there, you're safe. It didn't break in the next shot. Right. Twelve seven. Perfect return. And that, that's the third wrist ball of this match. Casey out of sorts. For sure. Well, when these two play each other, we 13, find stuff like seven. that. We see wrist balls. We see appeals for two bounces. We see stoppage of play when there's no should be no you stoppage. In an early round match, you never see Casey 14, miss her seven. down the wall shot so much that it hits the front wall at 10 feet deep. That's, that's not her thing. I think both of these women are feeling pretty uncomfortable deep in the left corners and Seven, deep in 14. the right corners. 
and it is pretty dark back there. And now that's 8-14 after Riley scored a couple points. 8-14. Katrina Casey pulled within four. Now Riley pulled away, and now Casey coming back with two straight. And much like we saw in the World Finals, Katrina just not comfortable taking full swings off the back wall. And she's got such a great back wall game. Nice shot. Wow. Riley had no problem with that. But Dave, you'll remember in that World Championship final, Katrina just locking her arm on every back wall shot late in the second game and in the tiebreaker, and it cost her, because that's about 40% of her offensive arsenal is that back wall kill. 14-8. You see Ashley Riley clutching her left thumb there, John. Like she has a stinger. Wow. wow. That's oh unbelievable. Gosh. And now Katrina saying that Ashley jumped in front of her. I thought that the ball was far enough behind her and that you had enough chance to see it. Very nice. Look at that. 15-8. Short. That's, that's why it's a lot easier to broadcast and talk about it as it is to play it. Second serve. Sixteen eight. Wow. Tenacious. And Ashley Riley does not win <laughs> that rally. Funny how it changes. Two phenomenal shots, much harder than that one she just executed, and then the eight sixteen the backhand save flustered her. That was amazing, John. Eight sixteen. But still, Riley with an easier shot than she had the two previous rallies. Look at that fist to the ceiling. Such a good serve, too. Let's see who breaks first. Actually, over hitting the ball off the back wall might be the best thing to do here. I agree with you, Dave. Look at that. Inside out, left-handed down the left wall. It's hard to keep it down there, John. You're a lefty, so you know how easy it is, but 16, she's not left-handed. Well, three of her last four rallies, incredible. The only, the only blemish off that one fluke shot by Casey. Not fluke. But Big setup here for Ashley Riley, and she puts it away. And a timeout call. Katrina, that's your second. One minute, the score 17 8. Timeout there from Katrina Casey, our referee Dave Fink, and John Bike here. And Dave is going to talk to 17 8. Ashley and Riley there. Dave, uh, both women, you'd say that they're, like John said earlier, the best rivals in handball right now are really these two. And they're also kind of rivaling, giving you a hard time. Uh, on kind of some strange calls there in a way because we're not really seeing them live, but they're yeah. seeming to kind of, is, do you find that, that that it's just more of a tense moment for them and that's why they're bringing it up? Uh, more than likely, yes, because we saw the same type of thing at the World Championships when they played. But, you know, I think from watching the, the men all day who do this routinely, normally after every point, they're starting to pick up on some of those terrible habits. Is and it, so it's a kind of a nervous habit, do you think? Well, I, I think that they think, you know, playing enough handball here that this has become an acceptable part of the game, which is to complain about things that aren't happening. Now, now shine the mirror on yourself here. Actually, that's all I have to say. Ten seconds. Yourself as a player. <laughs> Can't that's do it now. I'll just leave it right there. So who are they learning these habits from? Name Which players? <laughs> I don't name names. I'm going to start with David Fink. Well, neither of them have ever seen me play, so I'm... Well, then these younger guys must have learned it from you. you this must Innocent. be third generation now. You have to make it past Thursday for these women to watch a things. match of yours. <laughs> you have to make it past Thursday for the players to watch a match of yours. That's a good point. Well, they're studying, 17, film. They're eight. studying the film. There's no film on Thursday, John. Screen. I'm, I think, wasn't David Fink the most consistent quarter finalist for a few years running? First serve, one screen. That award goes to Naughty Jr. 
Well, yeah, he, he never he never complains about things. So <laughs> that's that's superfluous information. Can Katrina Casey Ooh. get points here? Screen. Well, I I recall I do recall the tiebreaker of the world. I was struck by Katrina's unwillingness to end rallies. Seventeen eight. She was just, she just thought tenacity would get her through and just keep it in. And I'm seeing a little of that right now too. Like going more defensive just than def aggressive. Any, well, defensive in defensive situations is fine, but in offensive situations, maybe driving more than and shooting less than ideal. Of course, to me, the ideal is, is to shoot 100% of the time, so you can only go down from there. And Dave, I'm not sure you saw that look. I did see it. I'm not understanding it. What does she not like about that? She won the rally. Why, Eight, is, why is Katrina Casey looking at the ref after that rally? She won it. I don't even know if there was a hinder, a screen, a contact. She thinks that Ashley's playing too close. That was close. I don't see it that way, though. That, as you were saying, that it, Ashley there was backing into her. So yeah, but like, that's still, you have to play through that. I mean, 9 This is the pros. You're not playing C handball. Well, in my video analysis, I have heard two very same people I'm speaking to now complain about a lack of avoidable hinder calls. Just saying. I mean, I don't want to be that guy. That was an unavoidable, though. I agree, but if you were if you were if you were in this seat here, you would have been crabbing about the ref not calling. Wow, that's amazing. Second flat rollout in the last eight minutes. 18-9. Puts her only 15 behind Armando Ortiz's one game record. <laughs> That's true. I think Mondo did something we've never seen before earlier. I think it was Marco Chavez who did something we'll never see again. That's true. And there's a side out. And John Bike, Marco Chavez, eight consecutive balls that he did not get back to the front wall. 9-18. Ooh. Eight consecutive. Hit to him either on serves, first strikes after the serve, or whatever it was, eight times. That would be a record. I'd, I'd like to see that. And Riley, though, razor, laser sharp right now. And what excellent foreshadowing by David Fink 18, to bring up nine. the two earlier matches she had won after playing terribly in the first game. Should she start doing that intentionally, maybe? Just win every time? <laughs> replay. I know, David, you're upset I didn't specify why it was a replay. 18-9. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see a questionable call and then hear your analysis as if you were not the ref. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> call. Horrible. So far, the referee is calling a perfect game. That hasn't. <laughs> That's the attitude been the referee should have. But let's say you, you take a 60 40 call and go with the 40. If you're in the booth, you go, Dave, that's the worst call I've ever seen. So all of a sudden, could Dave Pink is Jimmy London. Could you please do that for me? And that's an inside out push down the right wall for Ashley Riley, now back in the service box, 18 to 9. 18 9. Big setup here, revolving door. Yeah, she's feeling it now. Very Look how she's bouncing right here. On the toes, exactly. That was not a good shot, though. And you see Katrina just does not release that elbow on the back wall swing. No, but you, you see a lot of confidence from Ashley Riley now off the back wall. I let that play continue, and I feel pretty good about it. That was an excellent... <laughs> Excellent no call by the ref. It, it probably would have meant more if Time it came out. from someone. That analysis came from other, someone second, other than himself. One minute. The score but is 19. Nonetheless, nine. <laughs> was a very good no call by the referee. As first pointed out by the referee. Well, I learned a you're long like time one of ago. If you're not going to pat yourself on the back, then who will? Well, that, apparently that's the philosophy of all my Facebook friends. I'm seeing a lot of excellent no call. The whole court was open. All she had to do was touch it. It would have been a hinder if, 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 if she touched it down the right. I just can't stop talking about how great that call was. 
It's the Simple Green U.S. Open of handball. Ten seconds. Ashley Riley and her entourage. Now earlier, Kara Mack said that Time. Sean Clark was Ashley Riley's partner. But what she's saying is they both go, they, they play at the Owen Arden Ashley, you have one GAC time out remaining. Katrina, in you Belfast, also have near one Belfast. Time out it's remaining. in St. Paul in Antrim. 19 9. And they are training partners together. And Sean Clark is a physical trainer. So that's what she meant by that. They're not an item. I don't but think anybody misunderstood that but I you, think Dave. only one person needed clarification on that. Okay. Well, that's what it means here in the States when you say someone's somebody's partner. Wanted to clarify it for the world. They're actually training no, partners. No, they don't hear either. They, they do if they're the same sex, they would. Oh, okay. Sean Clark is actually a physical Nine, trainer. 19. I never Something once in my entire life have called Lupita my partner, huh. except the time we played doubles. Well, they don't play mixed doubles here. I had to give you that small victory. Up oh, there's a screen there, Replay. no call from the ref. Another I'm trying to give you the shot if you have the opening. I thought you had the right, but you didn't have it. Nothing wrong with waiting to let it go up. Casey seems to disagree though. David was actually doing her a favor there. That was a nice shot right there from Katrina Casey. Going over the top of the ball, bending it down, keeping it down the left wall, gets the point. Now 10-19. 10-19. If it goes breaker, Katrina will be serving. Wow, nearly a flat rollout, just about a half an inch high. Nineteen ten. Another perfect shot. That's another effective first strike, and yeah, she's. I would shudder to see the kill shot stats in this match. It's, it's, and I'm sorry, in this game specifically. Skip. 10 20. Eleven twenty. Short. Second serve. And the Another fourth wrist ball of this two-game match. Definitely fighting herself. Twenty right eleven. Now. But projecting that fight onto referee David Fink. Might want to queue up that return of serve. <laughs> Game. Five minutes. And Ashley Riley does it again, pulls into Los Caballeros, goes to the finals and makes it to another tiebreaker after losing the first one. Let's go to Kara Mack, who's courtside before we go into this break and our game number three. Kara? Hey guys, I'm here courtside with Tracy Davis, who's been watching this match here. Talk about these two players. I know you've played them both. Right? right. <laughs> you I, looked at me I, like I was wrong no, no. for a second. Okay. Like, I whoa, I know. Maybe I, I played Ashley. I was like, uh, we're talking about the match. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so for each of them to take a game here, no surprise. Um, no surprise. Um, I was lucky enough to catch their um, finals match at Worlds in Calgary this year. And um, it's kind of the same thing going on. Um, Katrina had a um, convincing win in the first game, and then Ashley rallied back in the second game, and now it's a tiebreaker. And the way these um, ladies play each other, it, it can go either way. Can you recap that tiebreaker for us, how it kind of went down that ended up being Ashling? And um, Ashling's favor in Calgary? Um, yeah, I mean, Ashling just played tough, and um, she went in there with just uh, 
kind of like a servant shoot mentality and, and just every opportunity she had to shoot, she was going for it and she was hitting it. Um, whereas in Katrina's side, it seemed like she was trying to be more defensive and went on defense and try to get her shots going, but um, Ashling was taking more of an um, offensive approach, so that's what made her win. What do you find as both of their strengths? Um, their strengths are um, their mental game. I mean, um, they're the top two players because, I mean, aside from their skills, their mental game um, is well above everyone else's, I think, currently playing. So, What do you think each of them need to do to come in and win this on this one, on the tiebreaker? Um, I think um, the person that's going to win this match is the person that gets on the court believing that they're going to do just that. You've been indoors and outdoors here at this tournament. Tell us the difference between the two and how it's going outdoors because we didn't get to see that today. Um, the difference between like the atmosphere of the four wall and the one wall. Um, the four wall seems like it's, it's a golf tournament, whereas outdoor is like going to a baseball game. <laughs> I love all, all the players are kind of giving comparisons. I'm yeah. just going to need to hear. Yeah. Uh, Danielle and Sandy tomorrow in the finals in the one wall yeah. outside. What can we look forward to as far as that goes? Um, who could win that? That can go either way also. I mean, that can go either way also. But um, Danielle has got a winning streak going right now. So um, I don't know. It's, it's a tough choice for me. It really is a tough choice for me. I like them both in that finals. But um, I can't really give a prediction. I really don't know who's going to win it. These two players, I don't believe either of them ever switched to three wall, one wall. What do you think that benefit is to them as far as staying purely just four wall players? And then what is it, how is it benefiting you and players like Danielle to have both sides of the game? Um, I think it benefits the player to, to focus on one um, particular code of handball because then that's all you have to worry about. You know, you know what the shot's going to be, you know what apparatus you're on, so you can just focus on that. Um, switching, you know, especially being that it's big ball um, outside and then it's four wall indoors, um, you know, you're messing up the timing and, and court positioning and even the dimensions. I mean, that's some of the problems that I run into whenever I play both. But um, I like that, um, you know, for me, I can use what I, I play in one wall in the four wall court and then the four wall court, the footwork and so forth, it helps me out that outside in one wall. So I don't know, that's how it works for me. I, I don't know, like, you know, for other people how that works out for them. It's confusing, I'll say that. It's confusing. <laughs> This is the kickoff of the four wall season, essentially. What are you looking forward to most? Um, I'm looking forward to the New York um, stop uh, in March. Um, I wasn't able to go last year, so I'm really excited. And, and that's pretty much the next stop for the women's um, pros. So um, it gives you some time to rest and then to go back on the court and practice and get refocused and um, look forward to, Mar um, to the tournament in March. So I'm looking forward to that one. What is going to be your game plan heading into New York? Um, just to stay fit and stay loose and um, I think work on my mental game right now. It's, it's hard coming back from an injury and trying to feel like you're competent and you can still go out there and play. And So right now I'm just kind of working on that, just trying to feel more confident on the court again. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, guys. One minute. Thank you, Kara. As the referee calls one minute there, as a proud supporter of the WPH and the Simple Green US Open, R2 Sports has the ultimate app for the sports fan. Keep up to date with the latest results from all your favorite WPH events. R2 Sports gives you the instant access to a diverse range of sports and tournaments. Get live updates instantly on your handset. Follow your favorite handball players. Check their rankings, their latest results, favorite and events, and get live notification pushed right to the palm of your hand. Get your handball seconds. results anywhere, anytime. Enter tournaments, interact with the other players, chat with the fans, watch upcoming events live right from the palm of your hand in that app, John, R2 Sports, your link to the Global Sports Network. R2 Sports is available for a free download from the App Store and coming soon to Android users. You'll be able to Time. do it as well. You can track the scores, you can get the scores, you can look at the rankings, watch watch it live right on the palm. That's r2sports.com. Katrina well, Casey will serve the I'm really the looking tiebreaker. forward to that. I mean, I, I do that on a few other, formerly there were websites, and once they uh, brought out their own app, Gosh, it just got so much handier, and I'm sure this will be the same with R2. We're playing to Our 11. good friend from Australia, Simon Fitzgerald, had a hand in that. Is that correct? <laughs> That's right. Not just Simon, but... 0-0. Zero, zero. Good buddy, Richard Killian Tomaselli. Okay. Defeating okay. Mondo Ortiz in that fifth place playoff, 11-8 in a tiebreaker. So Carroll will play the winner of Darman Nash and Emmett Pichot for fifth place tomorrow One, morning. Zero. And Ashleen Riley loses that one there as Katrina Casey gets the first point and probably point number two here. Not so fast, Dave. That's, that's what she said. I actually never said that to me. 
Let's finish. And I, I wish he would, though. That's an avoidable. Avoidable being called here. On which player? I think no. Ashling. Yeah, point. And they're both saying what? It was two shots ago. You made contact with her during her swing on the back wall. It's a point. We're gonna... Point. Neither one has any idea. But Casey knows it now. Okay. And that's 2 0. Now it's 3 to 0. John White. This is what I was hoping for. Not hoping for, but saying Casey would need Time to do. Ashley. To win the match, she'd have to be, go for that bottom board. And One minute. Obviously aggressive there. here. You know. As a player on the Pro Tour for many years, John, and you've won some, you know, you won a world championship, you won a national championship, you've lost some matches. Can, did you lose a match in a final of a national or a world and you drove home and said, I know exactly what I did wrong there. I, I tensed up and I wasn't relaxed and then made the adjustment and immediately played that exact same person again and had almost the exact same scenario where the adjustments came true that you made them correctly? I don't know. 20 seconds. Uh, as a, as over the course of a career, absolutely, you learn. I, I tended to make the same mistakes more often than ideal. You get creatures of habit. Ashlyn, you have but one yeah, time you, out you, remaining. You have to. And what really helped me actually was the videotape. On the court, I, I, I honestly can't tell. But when I, and at that time, that's what it was. It was tape. They still say tape nowadays. But you'd, yeah. you'd put a tape in there and say, oh, wait. You watch it as a third person. You go, what the heck was I doing there? And of course, Brady. Was oh my gosh. And that's, actually, she hasn't been skipping many because she hasn't Zero been trying three. many. Right. So I hope that doesn't totally discourage her. Casey, not happy with that, but played through it. That's, that's Ashley playing very close now. Nice get there from Riley. And that's what you have to do if you have somebody right on your hip. It's good to see that right after a miss, coming right back and going for the next shot. 3-0. Is that a screen from your angle, No, nope. nope. No screen from my angle. Oh. Oh, she almost got that ball up there. Interesting, Katrina's taking full swings with her left off the back wall, but not her right. And interesting that Riley actually cheated forward to the left side just because Casey's shot the last few balls. Her pattern has been to drive everything. I thought that I was short. I called the serve good. I thought it was short. One agrees, one disagrees. Stand with my call, point. Riley had the option for the video appeal there, correct? Five zero. She had the option, she didn't take it. There's another point now for what Katrina a, Casey. 6 0. The scoreboard should say 6 0. There I'm it is. I'm surprised, Dave, that Ashling did not leave the court when she took her time out because her team has helped her a lot throughout this match and she didn't talk to them during that first break. And there's the seventh point. And I wonder why she didn't do that because we saw how she drew Seven, upon zero. that very team back at the World Championships. That, that team helped fuel her. And a two-bounce two call. Called, huh? That's nice. Zero seven. You have to think it's now or never for Ashling right here. At least to get on the board, yes. Make a dent. One seven. I'm having a hard time analyzing or predicting anything right now with these two. They're making occasional brilliant shots and then just missing the one they're working to get. Katrina lucky to bring that one back. But Ashling. Nope. 
He didn't quite find that bottom board. Hmm. No screen. They're a playing very close. There. Yeah, playing really close here. And Katrina finally catches up to that ball. And you'd have to think both of these women are a little tired. 3 7. Off speed drives her there. She dropped a few in a row Four right in front of her now. Quick points. Yeah, and Casey insisting on staying deep. Riley hitting average kill Stop. shots, but. Ten out Katrina, your Casey first not one minute. Yet. The score is 4 7. And you can see Katrina really wanted there to be a wet spot up there in that spot. She wasn't going to get the towel as Ashley's looking right down on that area saying, it's not wet. So that forced Katrina Casey to take a, uh, a this, legitimate timeout. This time the Raptors are packed here, guys. As they should be. Look at that. A lot that. of people overlooking. A lot of interest in this huge match. Katrina Casey trying to keep her undefeated women's race for eight record intact. She's four points from doing so, but Ashton Riley has scored four straight to cut this deficit by more than one half. 20 seconds. Katrina, you have one timeout remaining. 4-7. Off-speed drive serve again. Not the right shot from Ashton, but Katrina does not make her pay. Let's see if she makes her pay here. Doesn't. Here's a party ball. Katrina waiting for the contact call. It never came. Why would it? <laughs> <laughs> and here's another party ball. Second party ball of the rally. I'm moving that one. Though. Five straight. That's that's quite the, quite an answer back so far. Boy, you have to be in shape to play this game. Five to seven now. Five to seven. And Ashleen looks like she's not even winded at all. And Katrina now looks like she's winded. And now six to seven. Six, seven. You're gonna have to. Fortunately for us, the referee does not have a track record of making terrible calls in close matches in finals. <laughs> <laughs> Probably best. Hope it doesn't come down to that. We're all holding our breath. Uh, we all know it will. Oh, nice shot there. Ooh. Ball hits a crack. And she keeps it alive. How does Ashley do that? Mark that. Riley wins this rally. And she does. She does. Phenomenal retrieve. What in the world is going on here? That was amazing from Ashley and Riley. Now tied at seven going to 11. And Casey probably made more errors in this game by tenfold than she has the entire tournament. Seven, seven. Well. Is Casey thinking to herself? This is a replay of the world, and now eight to seven. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Zero. Zero I agree with you, Dave. You got to exercise those demons. Eight seven. Good to catch that. Very nice return there. She hits every wall in the court. Perfect. Seven eight. Eight straight points for Ashley and Riley in that inning. That's Katrina's favorite shot. She doesn't uh, quite put it away, but she'll take care of that one. I don't know. Oh I don't my know. Gosh. Oh, and finally, Ashley doesn't get one of those by. That was an amazing flip to the back wall. Ashley and Riley does it. Keeps the rally alive, and now we're tied. Eight, eight. At eight. She does not let that ball get to the back wall. Ashley Riley just dips that in. 
Low percentage shot, but she almost made it. 9-8. Runs down the wall. Yes. What to do with that one? Though. I thought Ashing changed her mind the last second there, and it worked. Push it down the right side. Yes. 8-9. Katrina being the tenacious one. Very uncomfortable yeah, from that position. Just right down never the wall. left the left side wall. Right view, and you had the view nine, to see, nine. It. see trouble there for Casey. Big set up here. Ooh. She gets it. Wow, here it is, match point. Timeout. Timeout, Katrina, your second one minute. The score is 10 9. Wow. It's really, it's really tense here. I don't do it. It's not, it's not our thing. They do it. What can we speculate that is not his thing, but they do it? I don't know. Ashley now receiving a lot of encouragement from her team. Actually, I believe that post-game ceremony will be from line. Katrina Casey. Well, uh, it should seconds. be whoever wins, Katrina or Ashley Riley, is going to get that from Kara Mack, who I believe will go on there and give the award presentation. It is their thing, but I believe Kara will go on and be part of that. 10-9. And if you didn't think she was going to be, I just told you she was. So hopefully that... Works Ooh, out. Look at right. That's that. Oh boy. Let's see what the ref does here. Replay. Did you see Riley take a half step right to the middle? Yeah. That's true. Who did I? 10 9. Migrated. Not a good serve. Does and the ref call one. it? Two direct, direct straight shots. Does in the ref a row. not call that or not? Two direct straight I shots. I thought you had in a row. lane to the left. But she's not allowed to take the center. But I, maybe our ref's not aware of that rule. I, I thought you had enough room. Mm. Now the first one bothered me because Riley moved into it. That one she was kind of already there, so. 10-9. The first one really bothered me. This is match point for Ashling Riley. That will be trouble. Oh, that's going to be trouble. See what both of these ladies are in the exact same spot here on the court, not moving much. Into the darkness. Back to the roof again. I'll just barely clip the sidewall. Otherwise, this match would have been over. Who's going for the first aggressive offensive shot? Oh, it's look at what Ashley does. Casey. She tries to go for that ball on the left side wall, no, no and it more. clicks out, and Katrina Casey passes with some power over the top, and it looked like she threw her whole body into that. Katrina Casey tried to call another timeout, but she's out. I hope Nine, she's ten. asking that and not claiming it. It would have been a technical honor if she actually made the call. Maybe a short serve there. Happened so quick. Big setup. Riley again to serve for the match. Thought Katrina would ask for the towel there. She doesn't though. 10-9. Match point again. And there it is. Ashley Riley does it. Defeats Katrina Casey here and wins the U.S. Open title. It is Ashley Riley's first ever WPH Race for Eight Pro Stop. She's the world champion, and she wins her first ever WPH stop here on the Women's Pro Tour and the U.S. Open title. And, wow, a little bit of emotion here from Ashley Riley because I think 
Uh, well, you would too, John, because she lost the first game, she fought back, and she did it here in game number three. And you can still see her giving that fist bump. It was tense, and and rightly so. This is a major tournament, and it's uh, it's nice seeing somebody different in a way, but of course it's always sad to watch the champion finally lose. And she was uncomfortable with that back wall shot the whole match, and finally that was the exact one that took her down. Well, I'll vouch that nighttime back wall is different from the morning back wall. That, that was a difference. Let's go to Kara Mack, who's courtside now during this presentation. Kara. We have a presentation here, but I first wanted to talk to you because that was incredible. I can't get any closer than that to walk away with it. How does it feel? No, it feels, uh, feels really good. Um, been in this situation about three or four times this year. Um, delighted to get the win, but I'll credit to Katrina, you know, it's a fight, dog fight all the time. And uh, just glad to get on top, especially in the simple green. I've won it twice, and this is my third time this time. Defeated in the, in the final a few times, so it's bittersweet, yeah. Quite the crowd out there supporting you guys. I mean, what an incredible tiebreaker. What was it in the end that you think put you over the edge? I think just knowing that I've been here before, um, the World Championships. Um, training, I've done a bit, tiny bit of training back home in preparation for tie breaks because that seems to be the way it's been going. So um, I think that just pulled me over the edge in the end. All right, I know this is what you've been waiting for, so I'm going to hand it over to Nadi. She has the presentation, I know, for both, the, both of the ladies. So come on over. I'll let you take it away. I'm going to give you this mic, though. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the trophy presentation or the medal presentation to a beautiful match. And I know the Irish lads are so happy to see these finals. And I want you to give them a great hand for a great match. <laughs> Simple Green and the US Open of Hamble want to thank you for all your support and for having a record breaker of 350 entries. Okay, so thank you so much. Nani Alvarado getting the round of applause here from the crowd during this presentation Katrina, after the women's final. If you can come over here and accept this medal, we want to applaud you for your bravery and for all your championships. And you are young and you will be a winner as much as you want and you will be a winner. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for showing us your ability of a great handball player. Thank you. Nadia Alvarado Sr. knows exactly what it's like to lose. Both of them are warriors. And win. We're very proud of you. The US Open of Handball and our sponsor, Simple Green, want to thank you for your success, for your world championship, and you, for your national championships, Katrina. And we want you to come over here and get the medal. And thank you so much for all, all the great playing that you have given us throughout the years. Thank you so much. Great presentation there from Nadi, because like I was, I was saying, Dave, he, he knows exactly what it's like to win and lose you when you really something? want something. And I think all of these. She's going to talk just a little bit, because we got the men's 40 coming up pretty soon. First of all, I just want to thank Natty and Simple Green um, for putting on yet again a tremendous, uh, a tremendous tournament. It's always one of my favourites. Speak up louder. Thanks to Natty and Simple Green. Um, it's always a brilliant tournament. Um, you know, I think the last time I won this was 2012 after my last World Championship success. So it's nice to come in and re repeat it all again. Um, to everybody out in the in the stands um, who were shouting and screaming throughout the game, thank you very much. Um, to the WPH who always are here filming, streaming, you know, doing incredible stuff for us um, elite players. You know, we really appreciate it and thank you. Um, and thanks to everybody back home again. Um, incredible support always and uh, just glad I can come here and put on a great show. Um, well done to Katrina, you know, it's always a battle, but um, thankfully a few times this year I've come out on top, so I'm really happy about that. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Round of applause there. That's Thank just you. a microcosm of the fans that we Thank have. Thank you. Now we have another final on the men's.
Thank you, <laughs> guys. I'll toss it back up to you. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. But, there, you know, there's an overflow room here with big screen TVs, and that's where a lot of the fans are migrated. Dave, the, yeah, I, what, that, that I'm bit of emotion there from Katrina Casey yeah. where it looks like she's crying but you know wiping off sweat mainly yeah. but you can tell she's emotional that's what I want to see from the pro athletes after a loss I mean that that shows you that you that you really put everything into it when you get emotional like that win or lose that's uh, that was actually a good sight there well people grieve in different ways some kick their bags across a court mm -hmm. others just I got the text message on yeah, that <laughs> others just <laughs> go into a hole and don't really want to talk to anybody others never play anymore yeah well, that's the best thing you can do. But, but you, you know, you, it's nice to see that emotion there. As Ashley and Riley comes back and wins that, what, as the referee, mm -hmm. did you see up there that was the turning point from how this happened? Because it, I thought it was very similar to the world. Yeah, well, the turning point for me was Katrina losing confidence in her right hand off the back wall. Because, you know, Dave, having played her and watched her for years, she's got such a great right hand back wall kill. But for whatever reason, in the World Championship final and also here tonight in this final, in the middle of the match, throughout the end of the match, she locks that elbow and just pushes the ball back and just throws the ball up high. It's not really a good shot. A lot of them are setups, and she doesn't even give herself a chance to end rallies from there. And like I said when I was up in the hot seat, she's taking away 40% of her offensive arsenal. And Ashing Riley can then relax, and she knows she can leave balls off the back wall because it's not going to be in danger of Katrina ending the rally. And I think that is really the difference because you saw Katrina Casey when she was confident in that first game win pretty easily. And I know Ashling wasn't playing at her best there, but then you start to see those nerves creep in, and I think the nerves creep in on that back wall, right yeah. hand in particular. Yeah, I, I think you're right there. John, uh, as you saw too, and I know we were talking about the back wall game, she Katrina Casey was just terribly uncomfortable. And you, you watched a little bit of the World Championship. She was uncomfortable there as well. She's going to go to Tucson, Arizona in a couple of weeks and try to play in the men's qualifier. And I think after this loss, there's a good chance she probably will back out of that. But there, there's an uncomfortable back wall there as well because it's dark. How does a player get over that? Because we see other players on this court strive. Uh, Mondo Ortiz playing very well off the back wall. So certainly from one player to the next, they can see the ball off the back wall. It's not that it's that invisible. How can you get over those kind of yips off the back wall? Yeah, I'm the wrong guy to ask. I have horrible memories of this back wall in night matches. I exact, I'm, I'm living exactly what Katrina was living in that game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm seeing it from her point of view. And sure, some people can. I think it depends on how much you depend on feel and instinct and knowing where the ball's going to be and how much you depend on actually having the amount of visual you need. It's yeah, different, it's different it's for every player, and Katrina and I are, are two people who I, I stiff-armed a lot of back walls, yeah. too, on this court. It's a very odd feeling when you feel insecure on a handball court because it's sort, of, it's sort of like you start saying to yourself, I don't even know if I can even structurally hit a ball correct. And when it, the back wall or a two-sided glass wall or a ball coming off the side glass it affects you, you just get so insecure, and you start locking your body and, yeah. and planting your feet. You don't move them at all because you want to try to stay defensive, and it's it's but a weird feeling. you got to throw in. You, you hate to ever get too heavy on excuses. Riley, like Ortiz, had no problem. She was yeah. just flow. So just, I mean, let's make sure she always gets the credit for this win, and we don't harp too much on this. Yeah, you know, she, she Dave, she instead, as much as we say about Katrina not taking that ball off the back wall, and that could be the game changer. Really, the game changer was all that confidence that Ashley started getting corner kills mm -hmm. but her get ability yeah. was about the best i think i've ever seen uh from from the women's players yeah, she was flipping balls to the back wall that yeah. we both knew well, that and weren't something gonna we haven't seen from her for sure yeah that was unbelievable yeah, historic like a few players in history yes but that was new to her game that's an uh, that's my favorite word this week but yeah it's remarkable gets keep rallies alive Dave, did you sense that as well, like things that you just said, well, that's a, that's okay, that's uh, going to be a rally ender right yeah, there. Yeah, and ben. I think a couple of times I even said it, that, you know, the rally was over, but Ashling found a way, including picking up a couple cracks that were behind her Yeah. and also flipping some balls into the back wall, and that put a lot of pressure on Katrina as well. And, you know, Ashing Riley has been able to defeat Katrina, and I think what they would probably consider their three – maybe most important showdown matches of the year. Katrina Casey, though, d winning the Nationals, winning the Players' Championship. So it's really been a back and forth over the last 12 months. And I think now you can really say, after Katrina won 8 of 9, that this is a true rivalry because now Ashling's holding three of the biggest belts in women's handball, and Katrina Casey's going to have to wait at least a year 
to try and win this one and another three years to try and win that world championship that's eluded her. Isn't it awesome? They've actually had like five major or close to major events. All those ones you described are yeah. big time. And right. It's certainly in, in Ashling's eyes, she probably won the three most important. Yeah. But that's five great events. They're three to two on. Right. Yeah, and, and the thing is they're playing each other at every one of the events. So whether mm -hmm. it was lopsided at the beginning or – you know, if Ashley was winning some for a, a while and then Katrina took over and then Ashley's now splitting and taking a few in a row, the point is they're playing at every single one of these major events, the All-Ireland Senior Championship, the Irish Nationals, the World Championships, Players' Championship, National Finals, the U.S. Open Finals. It's just, it, I mean, the trophy case just in one year from these women is, uh, it's just packed full of trophies, win or lose, because they're, they're both getting one, and, and it's, it's really remarkable to watch. Now, we have the men's semifinals uh, here of the 40 plus on the senior tour, Chris Watkins wearing the red and and uh, Nadia Alvarado there on the left hand side wearing the simple green colors. We're going to get to that semifinal match coming up right around the corner. It's going to start here in less than 10 minutes. We're going to take a quick break as Ashley Riley pulls it out again in a third game, defeating Katrina Casey. And we'll have more of this live streaming handball action on ESPN3. And the Watch ESPN app. Want to thank John Bike and those that helped out with the live broadcast, Dave Fink. My name is Dave Vincent. We'll be back here as we give you continued coverage on the world players of handball right around the corner. <laughs> 